Hello, welcome to Ingots Engineering, I'm Alan. In today's video we'll be making a tailstock depth finder out of some scrap material. In fact it was a piece of material that I broke a tap off in when I was making the grinding wheel arbor. I want to put some sort of measuring device on here so I can measure the depth of the hole that I drill when I'm using the tailstock. At the moment all I've got these markings on the quill which are in every two millimeters so what I've noticed is that on this end of the tailstock the handle has got a machine part and a face the only thing holding it is a small grub screw that goes through there I don't want to do any drilling into the tailstock or or fit anything like a digital caliper because that means you've got to make something to hold that in place and then something to put on the end to, to pull the the blade in and out. So what I thought about was putting a ring round here with an earl on it so you can turn it and then just engrave in the markings. So basically what we have here is the, the rough drawing. This is the tailstock end and this is the handle. So I'm going to make a ring that goes over the handle, a bit of clearance here 45 degrees for the tailstock if I engrave this then with the increments for a two millimeter because from the test we did uh, one turn of the handle is roughly two millimeters that will then give me a better guide than the current engravings on the tailstock. mil and I want it to fit over this handle 45 degree angle so I can put some clearance on the bore for the tailstock. The part you see here is the end of the tailstock. I'm just checking that it will clear with the 45 degree angle.
unscrew the screw from the outside put this on the end line it up with the dimple and screw the screw back up I've taped a rule steel roll to the top of the tail stock and I'm just going to mark the edge of the red felt tip. So I'm going to turn this one revolution and see how many thou it gives me on a dial indicator on the other end. The dial indicator is just touching the end of a Jacobs chuck so I can measure one turn of the handle and give me the reading in thousands. It's 50, 60, 70, 80, 84 there. The next thing I need to do as well is make a small cut out in the top here just so I can get the oil can in to oil the, the top there. In the end it's easier to fire a semicircle in you can just put the oil can in to oil that. So what I've done now is clock this up true in the chuck I'm going to take the chuck off with the job in and put that onto my CNC machine finished ring with the engravings done and one turn is two millimeters. This is side is just clearance. This is for the to get at the oil feed pipe with the oil can so that's just a, a cut out there. So what you need to do now is we're going to fit this small bit of spring steel into the groove. And that just sits into that groove and then the handle goes into the hole you, you can see then that the the face here stops the spring still coming out you see it's springing and it also gives you a bit of grip 
to stop this turning round. So now we can fit this back onto the, the tail stock, see how it works. drilled a 3mm hole 5mm deep so that it can fit some brass rivets. Using the plate as a guide, drill the second hole for the brass rivet and countersink. Well thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you next time on Enots Engineering.